News first, face to face. Good evening and welcome to Face to Face. I'm Niresh Eliyatambi. Sri Lanka is known as the land of paradise, but unfortunately, we seem to lurch from one disaster to another all too often in the last few years. Now, uh, to discuss this and other matters, uh, we have with us today Dr. Harsha De Silva, Member of Parliament representing the Samagi Janab Balavegia. Welcome, Dr. De Silva. Welcome, Rex. Uh, so, Dr. Harsha, now um, you have uh, tweeted on the platform X, known as uh, X now, uh, used to be Twitter. You have recently tweeted that uh, the government's approach towards the macro linked bonds, uh, which it is negotiating with bondholders now. Uh, is possibly another disaster in the making. Mm. Uh, would you like to elaborate on this? Thank you. I mean, this is a fairly complex uh, matter that we are dealing with. Uh, what I said is, now that Sri Lanka GDP for 2023 is officially out at 84.2 billion, and I say, uh, so says CBSL. Actually, I made a small error. It should have been 84.4 billion dollars. That's right. Actual ISB haircut as per current MLB proposal, which I said Sagala R is pushing, will be nowhere near 30 percent. And I say that is what the president and the Podujana party are promising. My estimate is 10 percent or even lower at 7% disaster, somebody tell him. Now, in fact, uh, Sagala interestingly had responded to that tweet. I see. Uh, and said, Asha De Silva has confused Sri Lanka's GDP outcome for 2023 with the ISB holder group's proposal, which talks about average GDP between 2025 and 27. These are one-sided preliminary proposals which are still under discussion. And what he also says is anyone can come up with proposals and estimates, but the final restructuring deal must be in line with comparability principle and debt sustainability analysis. Have a look at the GOSL proposals before making statements he had told me. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and I replied him, and this is very interesting because we need to have a, a good dialogue. Look, you it's know? good to have a good discourse like this. That's right. But I did say that, <clears throat> uh, good that you replied, Sagala. And I say, no, not at all. I am not confused. I am referring to the actual 2028 haircut. Given 2023's already 84.4 billion, I correct myself, by 2028-9, it is certainly going to be mid US dollar 90 billion. And I uh, have a little smiley face saying, unless AKD, <laughs> please tell your advisor not to assume I'm unable to read and understand. Now, this is, the, the, so this is happening uh, uh, on a public platform, uh, which is, and then other people have also, uh, uh, you know, made their various observations. Well, now, um, I grant that th there is one proposal by the bondholders and another proposal by the government, right? And then there has to be some coming together because what they are saying is within the next few weeks, they want to agree on the, the final restructure. Which is a crucial aspect. Which is a crucial aspect because you see, we haven't still signed the MOU with, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, with the Paris Club. That's right. Neither have we signed the MOU with China. Now, IMF is saying, unless you have these MOUs signed and you have a fairly uh, sort of uh, strong move towards uh, coming to the same page with the ISB holders, they can't release the, sec uh, the third tranche, the second, uh, you know, EFF, uh, you know, take off. That's right. Now, 
the, the Paris club guys and the Chinese are saying and India essentially, look, we want to see what, you, what the deal you cut with the ISB holders before we sign their MOU. So it's a chicken and egg situation in a way. Yes. And then, so that is the sort of the, the situation out there. Then back here, we have the politics, right? Election, uh, restructure. Then we had the domestic restructure where the EPF got hammered. Now Ranjit Simbala Pitya said in some place in his electorate that the interest rate on the EPF will be increased from 9% to 13%. We saw right. that in the news, but there hasn't been any official statement uh, to that effect. But see, the nine percent was from this year on. You know, for you know, n number of years down the road. Yes. So is Simbala Pitya saying thirteen percent only for this year, or is he saying thirteen percent? You know, from this year onwards. A lot of things are being said in the run-up to this election. Correct. But and I am, not, I, I am almost certain he's not saying that. He's just saying, look, you know, this is election year. This is not, he's not saying that. I'm saying that is what he's trying to sort of, without saying it, uh, without being honest about it, uh, trying to sort of hoodwink people to make them feel it's going to be 13%. What I'm saying is they got some crisis bonds that they were uh, getting a good yield. So they can dump it in the market, use that money to pay off this year. Right. right. And then back down to 9%. Right. So, so all these things are taking place. Right. And then on, uh, before you go to the next question, is that th then another alternate, uh, uh, you know, uh, party is saying, look, forget all this. We are going to have to first undertake a debt audit. And look at each borrowing and make sure that these are not odious debt. Right. That means that this money was used for other purposes, robbed, stolen, you know, uh, stashed in some country overseas, etc. And then once we are clear that these are uh, loans, bonds, de paper that need to be paid back, then we will start a discussion with the bondholders and the Re, uh, re, uh, respective countries. Now that is multiple years away, right? Because you can't do a debt audit in, in like three weeks. Now in the meantime, interest is accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. On the bonds itself, we have close to uh, 1.7 billion dollars of arrears that uh, have got built up. And when people say, look, we are not paying interest Mm -hmm. uh, on these loans because it's a, if you're not paying no anything, yes. that doesn't mean it is not building up somewhere else. So Interest we, is getting built up, built up, built up. Right? Every day we delay, that is getting built up without a restructure. The more you push this back, the bigger the problem becomes, the higher the, the debt mountain becomes. This is the effect of the government announcing its bankruptcy two years ago yeah. uh, and then actually not paying on these. Uh, yeah. 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 So, I mean, in, in the sense, what they did was they said, look, we are unable to pay. Right. right. We are unable to pay because, because Sabri found out um, that he had $30 million in the kitty. You know, on that day that he had to pay something like $198 million in two debt uh, repayment installments and he had 30 million right and because all that money was uh, you know used up um, but we were lied to by Nivad Cabral uh, and others lied to and I, I, I say it again reiterate that uh, to the public that there was enough money and all the loans were going to be paid back and it is their own government I mean I, we had nothing to do with it and they came and said look we don't have any money so we, are, can't, we can't pay that's right. right. I mean, long before that, we've been warning them. Yes, indeed. You were warning for many months or even years before. Uh, and, uh, you know, j many journalists and other um, academics, uh, econom economists uh, did pay heed. But uh, apparently, the government of the day did not. Yeah, I mean, you know, we would never have got into this position if they listened to what we said in 2020. 
you see the first speech that i made when i came to parliament after getting reelected in 20 uh, was that look better go to the imf and resolve this before you become bankrupt right right the writing was on the wall because prior to the election uh, you see the election got delayed Yes. because of the virus corona uh, covid uh, virus mm-hmm. uh, gotabe rajapaksa had won um, uh, uh, at the end of 2019 without a parliament he uh, you know brought taxes down he uh, you know made multiple uh, policy missteps as a supreme court judgment on that on that so when we actually came in and sat we realized what the the immediate future was going to be imf had already said sri lanka's debt was now no longer sustainable you see three weeks prior to the election they issued a, uh, one of their reports which said the debt was sustainable and soon thereafter debt was not sustainable because of all these crazy idiotic things that Uh, that that happened so then they should have then resolved this before we went bankrupt that's right now bankruptcy has severe negative uh, implications as we see as, as we saw with all the queues we all saw we don't need to go there right and we have one still gotten out of this right that's right um, but um, uh, and if the debt had to be uh, restructured and then we said well look you know solicit consent you know solicit consent with everyone and then come to some deal that can be that you can live with but nothing of the sort happened they kept saying no we will pay we will pay we will pay finally uh, when uh, we were uh, you unable know, to pay yeah excreta hit the fan <laughs> uh, then <laughs> then then all hell broke loose so dr harsha um, what you are pointing out is that prior to the declaration of bankruptcy in 2022 um, there was not enough discourse on this parliament uh, was delayed in uh, being elected uh, and so on and so forth and a lot of misinformation uh, had been flowing around so it is now perhaps all the more vital that there needs to be a frank discourse publicly about this so of course it's wonderful that mr sagala ratnayaka has responded uh, and uh, we hope that this public uh, discourse will continue yeah i mean him responding is one thing you know on a social uh, media platform which is widely you know shared amongst uh, those interested people both here and abroad uh, but you know he is not the person in charge right the people in charge must have this discourse not on x uh, but inside parliament yeah, uh, right. in 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 first in the committee right uh, and this is what we have been asking for i have personally said look you know the, you have another uh, how long so let's say first of october is election this is may may june july august september 5 months to go right and then according to what is uh, on paper here the proposals we may go till 2038 uh, you know before we finish uh, repaying the restructured bonds so we are talking 14 years right uh, we are going to be we are going to be tied to the agreement that mr vikram singh uh, with his advisors lazard and uh, and clifford chans agree to to sort of uh implement right so so that is why i have been saying and i continue to say look there has to be greater discussion with those who are now not in office but very likely will be in office in 5 months time so because this is uh, no matter who will be in office this is something that will have to be dealt with will be inherited by the next government and the one after that precisely nish i mean we hear of countries that have defaulted more than once you see if you look at the statistics you will see that of all the restructuring that took place in the last 30 years or so 
I think 60% of countries have defaulted more than once. Why is that? Because for one reason, governments change. Right. And then the next government will say, look, we are not able to do this yeah. or we are not willing to do this. Right. Or if you uh, use the odious argument, they say, no, we don't have to do this. Right. right? So there are multiple reasons. Right. Ultimately, what ends up happening is that people suffer. Now, when we went through the first default, we saw the agony that we had to go through. And we are, you know, yet to come out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. What if we go through a second default? Just imagine the second uh, time we default and then uh, we have to then restructure domestic debt again. EPF will have to be used again to restructure domestic debt. I'm saying all these possibilities do exist, right? And, and then, uh, you know, there will be, you know, untold misery. And it can, it can you know, get out of hand. You know, people can get to extreme uh, sort of uh, positions and, and do things that normally uh, people won't do. Which would be very bad for the country. Precisely. And uh, right now, I believe uh, something like 7 million Sri Lankans are below the poverty line, mm. uh, which is an enormous number yeah. uh, when you consider that we have only about 21 million in the population. That's true. Uh, so if this uh, exacerbates in any way, mm. um, we are going to be in a very bad place. Sure. Um, now, uh, Dr. Harsha, uh, these macro-linked bonds mm. or MLBs, mm. uh, that's something new, isn't it? It and, is. And, and we need to be careful about it. Could it you is. explain a little bit uh, to our viewers about what what is a macro-linked bond? Uh, yeah. And how did this come up all of a sudden? Yeah, see, macro link bonds have never happened. Right. right. I mean, see, you have something called VRIs or value recovery instruments. See, uh, now you are Sri Lanka, I'm the bondholder, okay? Mm -hmm. Now uh, you are defaulting and I need my money back. Right. You are saying, look, I will pay you back, right? And I say, fine. Niresh, you pay me back, but I say, how? You say, well, I have this plan. I'm working with the IMF. You know, I have uh, do, I undertaken to do these reforms. My taxes are going up. My income is going to get better. Uh, I will export more, blah, blah, blah. And I say, all right, that's a plan. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to accept that plan. I'll give you uh, the time to pay uh, then you say that's great, that's wonderful, because then I can once again, uh, you know, be a recognized player in the market, um, and uh, I will have a chance to get back up on my feet. Thanks a lot. Right. Then I say, you wait one minute. I will do that. But now you're promising to grow at let's say three uh, percent. Huh? Uh, of the economy, yeah, yes. I'm just saying, right? Yes. That your income will be, um, uh, you know, next year, uh, a million rupees. Next year, it will be two million rupees. Now, I say, okay, fine. You are saying, and your IMF, uh, uh, you know, buddies have agreed that it will be two million rupees. Now, what if it is 2.5 million rupees? What if you do better than what you expect to do? Right. In that case, buddy, you'll have to pay me more. Okay. Or else, put it in another way, you're asking me to cut the amount that you owe me, owe me mm -hmm. by 10%. Right. Which is called a haircut. Yes. I say, buddy, if you do better, then instead of my cutting off 10%, I am willing to cut off 5%. Right. So that because you have done better, I will also do better in that I will not have to give you so much uh, of relief. So the haircut will be less. Haircut will be less. In a sense, that is what an MLB is. 
but we haven't had this before N- not even not us no one in the world has had a uh, 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 mlb in the way it is proposed here in that originally all the bonds that were to be restructured were to be uh, uh, mlbs that is macro linked bond in other words now you take the country gdp linked bonds that's right what is your gdp in us dollars depending on that i will uh, i am proposing this will be the haircut now the government uh, in all fairness has said look you know we are not very comfortable with the proposal you have made mm-hmm. and we are also making a counter proposal the process of negotiation yeah so they have made a counter proposal uh, and 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 that is where they are uh, but what i meant by disaster is that if we agree to the proposal made by the the bondholders that is detrimental to us uh and therefore we have to fight hard uh you know negotiate hard uh to get to a point where uh the 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 28 or 30 percent haircut that was promised to us to the people yes by the government is actually comes through right now if you want uh, i i can i can give you a f- few few examples right uh, hold that thought dr mm. harsha because we'll go for a short commercial break and we'll be right back to this very interesting discussion with dr harsha de silva news first face to face mage api manta mokak hari karadarayak vela tibbo maat balanne uncle api manki taatta kiyala eta hatara maayan okkoba daala maye kollawa allagena uwa nettama nathi kala mama dekkine mama ृत्रिन कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी ओवर मैक्रोलिंग लास्ट फ्यू डेज Dr Harsha uh, you were going to give some examples yes yeah. now uh, let, there were there was a first proposal by the ad hoc group let's call them the bondholders right right could you elaborate a little bit about this ad hoc group yeah uh, bondholders have formed themselves into various groups and this one ad hoc group represents i think about 50% of all outstanding bonds held by uh, foreign bondholders right and i think there is another group representing uh, bonds he- held by local banks foreign uh, dollar bonds held by foreign isp held by foreign banks yes. oh, sorry lo- local and foreign banks locally right right uh, so uh, see the thing is th- this is under new york state law all of these bonds right okay, okay. so it, it, the jurisdiction is elsewhere right most of these bondholders are americans uh, europeans um, uh, and so on right and those guys then are representing insurance funds and so on and ultimate beneficiaries are people 
you know, living in the U.S., uh, Europe, uh, Japan, or uh, Australia, wherever. Okay. And so, so now we are only focusing on the international sovereign bonds, right? Right. Now there are things called collective action clauses, CACs, in these. Some bond series would define in the the uh, terms that seventy-five uh, percent of those bondholders, if 75% agree, then you can go ahead and agree with the, uh, the, the country involved uh, to restructure. Right. Some will have CAC slightly differently. Now, this was done because of what you call holdouts. There mm -hmm. was a point, and there are still is, uh, depending on how the CAC is defined, that if you hold more than a certain percentage of a particular bond, you can go to court. Right. Like that is how Hamilton Reserve Bank went to court. The case which yeah. is pending. Yeah, case that is pending. Because they got 0.1% more than the minimum that one should have to litigate against the nation. Right. Which, is, which has now happened. Right. Now, keep that aside. Because the American government, the British government, uh, I think French, Japanese, they are all supportive of the of Sri Lanka. We are very it, fortunate. Very for fortunate that. for that, and they are saying, "Look, you know, we want these guys to negotiate a deal, and until such time, don't give a verdict on this type of business." Right. So they've intervened in this case, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we are okay for the moment on that, as long as we can negotiate a deal with the bondholders. So there's a lot riding on this deal. Lot riding on this, right? Because if that goes sour, then the whole thing goes sour, right? Because they'll all want to get, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, pound of flesh. Right. right? And now, uh, so 75% need to agree. So f around 50%, you know, uh, is represented uh, in this group so which is which is okay which is not bad mm -hmm. right the, uh, the assumption is that these guys can convince another 25 percent and then have the 75 percent and have a deal done right right so even if these guys agree what i'm saying is there's still a few more steps to go before it's done right right now they propose something in march what they said is look you have a bunch of outstandings, right? I told you about 1.7 billion. Mm -hmm. We will do a plain vanilla uh, instrument. A plain vanilla instrument, Niresh, is in finance terms. It's no no bells and whistles. Okay. Okay. It's just, I have to pay you. I pay you some uh, interest that is called coupons. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I pay the principal and that's it. Very straightforward. Very straightforward. Even if the principal also can be paid in installments, that, that's also a possibility. Right. Now, these macrolink bonds are fancy ones uh, with bells and whistles attached, right? Now, the bell and whistle that we spoke about is the actual performance of the economy measured in terms of US dollar income or GDP on an annual basis. Now, I told you that these bondholders would like to benefit if the data right, does better than expected. Yes. Correct? Now, I explained yes. that earlier. No? Yes. Now, a lot of the times, what happens is you have what is called a warrant that is attached to the restructured bond, mm -hmm. which is detachable from the bond itself. And it will have its own life. Right. right? It can be traded in the New York Stock Exchange or wherever it is. It will have a value. It can People can buy, sell. It will have a, you know, 20 cents to the dollar, 90 cents to the dollar, 120 cents to the dollar, depending on how the how the market perceives the, the risk and uh, repayment and all that. But what the difference between, so that, that can be like a warrant, detachable warrant. Now, how the MLB is different from what has happened in the past, uh, 
uh, let me stop there for a while. Mm -hmm. And these don't ha necessarily have to be in terms of tradable paper. Now, okay. for instance, in the recent restructuring, uh, a particular country, I think Suriname, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. sold the rights to an oil well. Okay. So, depending on the amount of crude that is pumped out of this particular well, mm -hmm. a certain amount goes to the bondholder. Oh, I see. Some people linked it to sort of gold or some natural resource. Right. Now, in this case, no natural resources are linked, but it's a paper-based thing. So, it's a gamble on the future, but it is uh, just not a gamble as in the style of Las Vegas, but it is an educated gamble. Precisely. Right. Now, now the issue is, in an MLB, you can't detach it. Right. So, the whole bond is linked to that gamble. Okay. So, 12.5 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's all of it. Okay. Right? Of all of it, uh, according to the first proposal of the bondholders. The only thing that is n not in the gamble is the past due interest which is the plain vanilla. Right. It's a bit complex, but, but, but okay. I'm not going to try to explain the, the different scenarios now because there's a second proposal they made in April. I'll do that once and for all because of time, right? Absolutely. Yes. Then the government said, look, guys, all right, originally we were totally opposed to these MLBs. Now we will accept to work with you and agree to have some MLBs. But we will have seven plain vanilla bonds, okay, mm -hmm. and three MLBs. Okay. So, so in the in the in the proposal of the government, only about thirty percent were actually twenty seven percent was part of the gamble. The other seventy percent was not. Okay. Now, what they said is, look. The plain vanilla we are not going to explain, right? It's sure. It's 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 pretty clear now. That's right. In the MLB is what they said is, look, the way in which the you conduct the test to determine whether I have done better or worse cannot be purely the US dollar GDP for year X, Y, and Z. Okay. It has to be that plus the actual growth of the GDP in real terms. Right. Now, the, the bondholders said the test, right? There's, we're going to have, there's a test mm -hmm. at the end of 2027. Because from now on till 2027, nothing will be paid. Right. Right. There is some interest paid on past due and, uh, and, and, and interest. Only the coupon will be paid. Okay. But no installments of the capital will be paid because we don't know what the capital is going to be. Right. So this haircut, what people are talking about, some people are thinking the haircut is going to happen now. But the actual haircut is going to happen in 2028 January. 28 January. In, this, it gets even more complicated because there is a haircut now, which is a nominal haircut. But it will be readjusted in 28, beginning of 28. So you recoup or give away more depending on the test. Right. You get my point? Yes. So the bond will trade, but government of Sri Lanka will not start paying capital because we don't really know what the capital is. That will be based on the haircut, which will be based on the test. So... The bondholders are saying that test, the amount, mm -hmm. whether it is above or below, will be the average GDP in US dollar terms between 2024 and 2027. Right. That is the one and only test. Right. If it is above a certain point, this, below a certain point, that. Government is saying, no, the test will be the 
end of 2027 GDP in US dollar terms and the cumulative growth, like I said earlier, from 24 to 27. In that period, yes. The reason for that, Niresh, is that the exchange rate is going haywire. Absolutely. Now, I calculated the exchange rate that the IMF assumed when it did the, the program, mm -hmm. the uh, extended fund facility program. Right. It was estimated to be 337 at the end of 23. Okay. 24, 385, 24, 419, 26, 446, 27, 463, and 28, 473. But quite the opposite has happened. As opposed to 385 for 2024, people are predicting between 300 and 315. So That's a huge difference. Huge difference. So when you're measuring in terms of US dollars, the numbers that are that is now written down mm -hmm. are actually going to be much lower than what it would actually be. Okay. Now for instance, I said no, 84.8 .8 billion dollars was 2023's uh, GDP. Yes. That was when the rupee was at about 325 or so to the dollar. Right. Now it is 300. So, in fact, if you calculate today using today's uh, dollar rate, it will be not 84.4 billion. It might be 86 billion. Right. Or 87 billion. Yes. You see? So, that is why Nandalal uh, particularly is pushing to have both these things added in so that it will be better for Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. right? If 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 the if the current sort of exchange rates, you know, remain the way uh, they are supposed to be. Now, the government said, okay, if we do better this, the MLB we will pay you more, <clears throat> but if we do worse than what we have. <clears throat> propose <clears throat> then you'll have to give us a bigger haircut which is which is fair and equitable okay and it, a, there are a, a whole bunch of i mean you know if you look at this i don't know whether, whether you can see no, this right afraid, no, uh, viewers probably can't see it yeah can't see it but whole lot of whole lot of uh, possibilities and scenarios uh, that can happen based on what the uh, real GDP growth is, what the nominal GDP growth is. And the currency fluctuation. Uh, those are all implied. All so, it's very complex. Now, all of this, Niresh, has to fall within what is called the debt sustainability analysis done by the IMF, which is a bigger envelope. Right. Right. So, there cannot be any proposal that can even be discussed if they if it doesn't fall be, within the debt sustainability analysis which means as a nation how much debt can we pay now there is uh, there are debt to gdp uh, figures that we have to meet yes like we were at 130% of gdp it has to go down to 90% 95% by 2028 then there is something called the gross financial needs there is a amount that have to be borrowed to keep the country moving. The budget deficit has have to be so much. Then the uh, the primary balance has to be so much. Um, and in order to meet that, uh, of the thirteen percent that you can borrow from the the, the borrow as a country, uh, only four and a half percent can be foreign borrowings, and so on. There's a whole bunch of things that we have agreed to, right? Right. So. Everything that we negotiate and try to agree on will have to fall within the DSA. Right. Now, the first proposal in March, the IMF said, doesn't fall within the DSA. Okay. But what the government proposed does. Right. Now, the, the bondholders gave a second proposal, which is called the April proposal. When these guys went to uh, Washington uh, on the sidelines of the IMF and World Bank, uh, what do you call, uh, discussions. Now in that, <coughs> I'll explain this, is we have the plain vanilla 
for the what you call the uh, PDIs. PDI meaning the past due interest. Yes. So that's understood, no? That's right. That's that's done. Then they have one, two, three, four MLBs. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then they have in the middle another plain vanilla, uh, which is not for past due interest, but restructured n- new bonds. Mm-hmm. Uh, the on- that has added what is called a GLB, which is a governance link bond. Right. I'll just quickly explain that. Right. This, um, uh, this Verite uh, people came up with this uh, right. interesting innovation. What they said is by 2000, uh, what is that year? 2026, I think, if the, the tax revenue to GDP is 14% and in 27 it is 14.1%, and also the government discloses the procurement, you know, who bid, uh, who got what the bids were, etc., etc. And all the tax expenditures of the government, who got a, a tax-free permit to bring a car, etc., etc. All those things are made public. Then one-time adjustment of 0.5% of the coupon that is to be paid. So it's a reward for good governance. Reward for good governance, exactly. So if you were going to pay 6% interest, it will be 5.5% interest. But only for uh, this one plain vanilla uh, instrument in the middle of the MLBs, uh, totaling up to, I think, $1.6 billion, right? Uh, Maybe one or maybe two, totaling up to that much. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the MLBs. That's where the question is, no? Yes. Now what they're saying is, what they're saying is, now let's say the test gets done mm-hmm. at the end of twenty-seven. Remember? Yes. And that is the average GDP in U.S. dollar terms for two thousand twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven. A three-year period. Three-year period. Yes. Now suppose. The, the GDP uh, was, at that time, f- for that period, it ends up at $84.2 billion. Then we get a, it's a large calculation, I'm not going to go through all of this, uh, th- because the way it is done is there will be a uh, capital recoup. You'll add to the capital, and then there is a reinstatement, there is a, there is a percentage that gets applied on it as a cut, I don't have the time to explain all this. But if it is 84.2, we will get 28% haircut. Right. Now, that is close to 30%. That is what the government promised us. That's right. Now, suppose it is 86.3, you'll get a 22% haircut. Suppose it is 90.1, you get a 13% haircut. Suppose it is 93.9, you get a 10.2% haircut. Suppose on the day the test is done, our GDP average for those three years turned out to be anything more than 96.3 billion US dollars, the haircut will fall to 7.3%. Well, we certainly hope that our GDP would grow in that sense. However, uh, in terms of the MLB, it's a disadvantage. This is the point. You are getting it. This is the point. So if now... We are. We have already passed the eighty-four point two. Right. We are at eighty-four point four. Doing better than expected. Yes. So if you look at the various predictions of various uh, uh, bondholders, investors, hedge funds, banks, I was just looking uh, to see what these various projections were. Right. Now. Uh, uh, <laughs> The, the, the particular uh, a huge bank projects that uh, the, 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 the probability of Sri Lanka surpassing the 96.3 billion uh, limit could be as high as 71%. So that's, uh, if we do sign on, uh, on such terms, it would certainly be a huge disadvantage for the country. Correct. Yes. A, 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 and, and some people are suggest, forecasting that we might end up over $120 billion. 
assuming the reform goes through, assuming that uh, the next government will continue with the sort of investment and trade reforms, assuming the next government will put in place systems to generate the revenue, right. assuming all these governance conditions are met, right? Assuming people understand, that's the main thing, I, I want to reiterate this, people understand the need to do the absolutely essential reforms for us to survive. Assuming people will not be hoodwinked by certain people by promising the sun and the moon saying we don't have to pay this debt, this is odious debt, we have a plan, oh yes we haven't written it down but it's in our head, we are not uh, what we used to be, we are a different group of people, please believe us, look at all these people etc etc. If people don't get hoodwinked, right? I mean this is a hugely serious conversation we are having. Absolutely. Right? I had never had this type of conversation on TV before in my entire life. Right? Going through such complicated matters, trying to explain to an audience who are not, uh, you know, uh, generally... Uh, <laughs> well versed in this in these matters, financial right? matters. Right? So this but is they why... are crucial. Right? This is why when, when, when I, I, I took a swipe at one of these uh, people in a, a particular po political party when they said, oh no, we will tell them that we paid you 3% more and they will say, okay, no problem, uh, buddy, you know, you pay when you can for Do crying out loud. It doesn't now. work that way. It doesn't work that way. And I want all people to understand what I'm saying. I want everybody to please listen to me. You right. cannot say we paid you 3% more. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, why don't you forget about it? We will pay when we can. And they will say yes, okay. What it means is if we go with this, right, there is a, a, a fair possibility that nowhere near 28% will end up at 7%, right? Okay. Now, now I must at the same time uh, say that the government's proposal uh, is is meaningful, right? Yes. Because it, it, for for no other reason, it changes the way the test is done. Right. When the way the test is done is changed, the probability of us even though it is high of surpassing the US dollar nominal GDP, it will be adjusted, right, mm -hmm. negated by the fact that our cumulative real GDP growth will not be as high as uh, what is reflected in the, in the GDP number. Right. The GDP number in the uh, uh, workings is based on the, the behavior of the LKR USD rate. Which of course is at the moment unpredictable. Uh, well, it, is, it, is, it has got stronger, right? Now, if the rupee depreciates, right, to those mm -hmm. levels yes. of 446, 463, uh, by 2027, then then we won't have such a high US dollar GDP number. Right. So 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 what I'm saying is, the, I, I I I appreciate the position taken by our people, but mm -hmm. it, it, this needs to be driven, right? And it must be argued hard, and you know instead of Sagar Ratnayaka telling me you don't understand. It is beyond that. I do understand. Right? All what I'm saying is get some people, government officials, people to hard negotiate. Right. You can't leave everything to Lazard and, 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 and Clifford Charles and say, look, we will agree with whatever they say. And also, I'm warning, right? I'm, I'm telling this in all good faith, right, to the president himself. Look, yes, I understand you need a deal. I understand we all need a deal to get out of bankruptcy. Right. I grant you that. But please, don't do a deal just for uh, the sake of 
getting the deal done before election. Rather, if you don't have a good deal, postpone it. Postpone it by, by, by five months and let the new government do a deal. I'm saying if, if you are unable to come to a, an agreement where we are, a haircut is not going to fall to 10, 12, 7%. Right. It is better to not have a deal rather than having a bad deal. An interesting thought indeed. Um, and I'm afraid we are out of time. Uh, thank you very much to Dr. Harsha De Silva, Member of Parliament from the SJB, for all this enlightenment on what is an extremely complex matter and certainly needs to be uh, discussed out in the open much more. And thank you very much for watching. Good night.